All right, Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. Happy Sabbath, Happy New Moon, Happy New Year to everybody tuning in across the globe. Uh, congratulations, okay? The Most High has illuminated you to somewhat to understand that this is the truth, the truth of the Bible, okay, which everyone claims they believe in. A lot of people claim to believe in the Bible, uh, and they look at the Bible for certain guidance, certain instructions, of supposed to be instructions in righteousness, all right? A lot of people look towards this book, man, but we're living in the last days, all right? The last days. Christ left, all right? And now we're in these days right here making peace with the Most High through Christ. This is the greatest time known to man. Why? Because you have a bunch of doctrines out, and the Most High seemed to deem necessary and fit to take your spirit and set you right dead smack in the middle of the dark and cloudy day, man. You got to realize that this is a dark and cloudy day because you got doctrines on this side, doctrines on that side, everybody pointing at the Bible to try to see where to, to find a way, and the Most High illuminated it to you. That's all praises to the Most High in Christ, okay? Everybody can't see things written in the Bible, the way it is because the bible is that sea of glass mingled with fire so when you look at it whatever crazy ideology you're gonna have you're gonna pull it out of this book isn't that funny because this book is a snare for those who don't believe so you can come up with anything you wanted people come up with a vegetarian diet out of the bible people come up with smoking weed out of the bible all kind of stuff you'll be shocked People come up with uh, roaches as gods, animals as gods, everything out of this book. Yeah, all kind of things coming out of this book, man. So like the brothers, when we on the streets, you got brothers walk up. They, got, they go, everybody reading this book. I don't want to read this book. This book is confusion. What makes the way you read it right? What makes the way this person's reading it? Who's right? Who's wrong? We had a discussion for about an hour the other night. On the streets, one brother, Islam, Islam used part of the Bible, but I'm using the other part. So inherently, this should show y'all something. It takes a different spirit to be on you to get in this book, man. You don't have the spirit of Christ, you start going bye-bye. You start believing all kind of things. And the key person, when somebody goes off, and start believing things contrary to the whole context of the Bible is our good brother Paul. Why they run there? And every time you tell them Christ is over Paul, they have a problem with that statement. Anybody who runs to those letters and they don't understand them, they have a problem with it. They had audacity to pull uh, 2 Peter 3 as well. But the point is, for us that see, we continue to do what we're doing and let those folks who are doing contrary do what you continue to do. Because guess what? Ultimately, there's a higher power. And you will be shown who's right and who's wrong. You have to be solidified in what you believe. You have to. Because everyone is going to be in these different doctrines and all kind of stuff. So... At the end of the day, don't marvel, don't, I mean, never freak out on somebody who got a weird, I look at it, I go, oh, there you go, weird doctrine, contrary to the Bible. All throughout this book, folks, get you folks online, you might be new. I don't know how many times you folks have read the Bible. You can't Google your way through the Bible. You can't. You can't type in and Google your way through. You can research scriptures and understand what those scriptures mean and put things together, but you can't just Gentiles. Oh, there we go, all the Gentile scriptures. It's a problem. So in this is the problem that we have in a nutshell with our nation. All throughout the scriptures, y'all, the most high is shining laws, Statues, commandments, fall of Adam, fall of Adam. 
Adam fell because he didn't keep the words of God. The serpent, we went over that a couple weeks ago. He was using subtlety. Ye shall surely not die today. That's what he forgot to leave out. But man died. So now the sentence, this is where I'm, I'm going to say this, and then we're going to start touching it. Because you have to have some type of foundation to understand what's going on. Because what people get tricked up at is they go, oh, we all come from Adam. Yeah, okay. But what about before the flood? So before the flood, you can't say, because we all come from Adam through Noah. But before that, can you say that? You cannot say that. There was a separation. There was a separation. So if it's a separation and the people who are supposed to be ruling in that separation fell for not listening to God's word, then God do something new now and bring in the new world and then give the same sons of God the codes of conduct for you to operate in and you don't do it. Now you fall again. But the amazing portion of it is the Lord now, the most high, what he has done is said, okay, give them a shot. Last time destroyed the world with the flood next we gonna come with fire but guess what this time i'm gonna give them a gift i'm gonna send the holy one of israel i'm gonna send christ now who can find him you get to be able to escape that for is that is that escape now is what we're talking about today's topic salvation is it for everyone so the definition now of salvation is in very question about what y'all believe, man. You have to believe what salvation says according to the Bible. Salvation leads up and it's only the, the buck stops at Christ. But Christ said, I only came to save what? His people from their sins. So did Christ miss something? Because he should have said, I came to save all men from their sins. Let's open up the book of Psalms. I will um I would inherently not respond to emails on this topic. <laughs> but what I would request you do is just go over scriptures and everything else. I will respond to some things if somebody is maybe sincere, but we can't continue to worry and focus about those who have heard the message. We got to go to those who haven't and let the good Lord split them where they may. Okay. All right. Psalm chapter 14 and verse 7. All right. The book of Psalms, chapter 14 and verse 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel. Oh, that the salvation of Israel, read. Will come out of Zion. It's going to come out of Zion. That's how you know Christ is an Israelite. Christ is our salvation. He's an Israelite. It comes out of Zion. Read. When the Lord. When what? When the Lord. Come on. Bring it back the captivity of his people. What does salvation have to do when the Lord bring back the captivity of his people? Now you should be asking yourself a question. What is salvation? Maybe we got taught something about salvation that's inherently wrong definition according to the Bible. When the Lord bring it back the captivity of of his people because you in captivity you need to be saved read jacob shall rejoice everybody everybody's gonna jacob rejoice. shall rejoice come on and israel shall be glad and israel shall be glad mm. so why is that y'all let's go to luke we're gonna get that one out of the way real quick Go to Luke chapter one. This is your this is where your definition lies for what it is to be saved. What is salvation? All right. Because anybody can inherently say, OK. I need to be saved from debt. Let's just say that. Let's use debt. Let's read this. Double go St. Luke one in verse sixty seven. Mm hmm. The, the book of St. Luke, chapter 1, and verse 67. Come on. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost. So you holy rollers, now you got a problem. 
Because this is saying he filled with the Holy Ghost. He got the Holy Spirit. Can he lie? He can't lie. Remember the, the, the couple in Acts? When you lie, the most High put him strictly to death. Mm -hmm. So he filled with this spirit. Come on. And prophesied, saying. And now for you folks that are holy rollers, he say he prophesied. So I want y'all to know, see and answer the questions even in the comments. Now he's going to give us a prophecy. Mm -hmm. Come on. Verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. For he had visited and redeemed his people and have raised up an horn of salvation for us and the house of his servant David. The horn it means a king, which is Christ. He raised up this king, this horn of salvation. Now we can look upon Christ. We understand how to make peace with the Most High before the destruction of the world comes. The world going to be destroyed again. The, the, the Lord's going to purge the people of the earth. Read. Verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. So the house of his servant David, the Israelites, that we should be saved from our enemies. Are we? Is the Israelites, period. I don't care who you believe that they may be. Are they saved from their enemies today? Uh, please put in the comments because we want to see somebody that's, that says yes. And also, um, also, Elder, this is for the Holy Rollers as well. Who are your enemies? Because that's the thing. You want to know who your enemies are. Then it says, and it's not saying enemy mm -hmm. as in singular. That's why I say they always go enemy is dead. Mm -hmm. It says enemies. Come on. You want that yeah, precept? Ne go ahead. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 9. Because this is also for those Gentile seekers. Because when you say enemies, which is plural, you have to define. That's why precept must be upon precept. So the book of Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 9, to give you the understanding of who, what enemies is talking about. The book of Nehemiah. Chapter 5 and verse 9. Go ahead. Also, I said, mm -hmm. it is not good that ye do. Mm -hmm. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God? The fear of our God. Mm -hmm. Because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. The what? Because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. And we know what heathen means, the same definition of Gentile. It's, it could be twofold, but in this context... It's telling you the heathen, our enemies. Think about it. They are our enemies. They are not our friends. Because at some point in time in history, every nation on earth had us in captivity. Understand that. Okay. Well, let's go back. Okay. The book of St. Luke, chapter 1 and verse 71. <coughs> That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Come on. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. The mercy to extend to us, to give us Christ so that he can mediate for Israel to understand how to get back with peace between Israel and the Most High. If at, right so far right now, that has nothing to do with anybody else. Let's keep reading. And to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, uh -huh. that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. You see that? You have to serve without fear. This man tells you you have to do something contrary to God. We was talk had that discussion a couple weeks back. You you uh you the if if God tells you you're in a position where you gotta sign documents 
for marriages and you go this is I can't put this marriage together because it's against uh, God and these folks tell you you're going to lose your job over it you're going to have a decision to make whether you make the the right decision is go well I'm not going to go against God and do this whether you make the right decision or you don't you still have a decision to make that's inherently wrong that's wrong you shouldn't need to you should not have to be put to a decision to do what God automatically says you are got a, you're serving in fear do you understand that you're being put to the decision to do what God said is to do is right this is why the, in Christianity and other religions they omit the laws of God they omit everything you don't their whole premise you don't you, we can't keep them but yet you can read the laws you keep more laws in this land and 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 don't complain about it than what you read in the Bible isn't that something wrong read on verse 75 and <laughs> excuse me in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life in holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of your life Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. We're talking about Christ right now. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 13. Thou shall be perfect with the Lord thy God. You, does that sound familiar? What scripture is that? In the New Testament. Matthew 5, what? 48. Somebody get that. We got to take it slow today. We might, have some, we might have some people that's really trying to learn. We'll, we'll, we'll take it a little bit slow. Hold Deuteronomy 18. Mm -hmm. Because it's this, it's this notion in Christianity that you do not have to go to the Old Testament to add validity. The whole Bible is one book. To break up the Bible in your mind as old and new shows that you're not really that learned. Because when you look at everything in the New Testament, it's pointing directly at what was said, what you call in the Old Testament. It's one book. It's broken up into testaments because the mediation of the old under was, was with Christ giving it to Moses and Moses giving it to the Israelites. You got to understand that. Many people don't understand that. The most high is the ultimate power. Christ gave the instructions to Moses. Moses gave it to, to the Israelites. Now you go into the New Testament. Christ himself is there. Giving it directly out of his mouth is a higher understanding. What all this stuff meant. What everything meant. Everything boils right back down. Because if you go... Okay, all that's a shadow of Christ. How is a fringe a shadow of Christ? Fringes is meant for to remind you to keep the commandments. Now you have Christ. That should remind you to keep commandments then. Not get away from commandments. Keep that in mind. St. Matthew, chapter 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So he's telling you the same thing that's in Deuteronomy 18, 13. He's telling you the same thing. Your heart, your mind has to be perfect. I mean, you got to serve the most high with a perfect heart, a perfect mind. You can't just walk in. This is where I think a lot of uh, brothers and sisters that's looking at a God fall, fall off to the side. We're not saying that you do commandments and laws and that's righteousness unto you. What we're saying is your willing spirit to do exactly what God says, that's righteousness. You have a willing spirit to go, God said he don't like us to do this, I'm not doing it. God said he like us to do this, I'm doing that. You understand that? That's why you don't have to go around, it's not for you to go around and go, well, we are keeping commandments. And you're not. <laughs> Give me a break. That's baby. Uh, that's baby uh, talk. What it's about is you coming back to following Christ in the keeping of the commandments as He delivered it. 
We're going to find out how he delivered this thing. Go back to Deuteronomy, chapter third, chapter 18 and verse 13. Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 13. Come on. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Come on. Verse 14. For these nations. So we're starting to, we're going to start by showing you for these nations. This is how Israel always get caught up because they all, which your problem is, you have a problem within your own nation and you're looking outside of that. Inherently. You got to clean up your own nation, but you're looking outside of it. Okay. For these nations, somebody got to have a problem with God then. Somebody got to have a problem with this. For these nations, come on. Which thou shalt possess. What do they do? Hearken if unto observers of time. So the, uh, the nations outside of the spirit of God, they love astrology. Do you have anybody ever seen that they put up uh, commercials with psychics? Mm-hmm. The most high judge, Miss Cleo, she was she was lying to folks. You know. Well, she couldn't predict her own death. <laughs> Not at all. Now, these nations do this. What else they do? Come on. Unto di- diviners. Right, they go to, they do tarot cards, things people do in divinations, witchcraft, put out uh, subliminal messages to the people, have you thinking one thing, really doing another. Okay, come on. But as for thee, the Lord thy God. Who is the thee? As for thee. As for the nation of Israel, as for thee, as for the nation of Israel, which are you so-called blacks, you so-called Hispanics, whose fathers of Negroid and Indian descent, they hate you. They don't like us saying that. Believe that. Everybody want to be inclusive. Universalism. Bring everybody in. We're all, we all can be a part of God. How's that working for you? How's that working for you? You are the, you are the person. This, this is what gets me about our nation because that's a child like mind. As you, we're going to forward read in the Bible, you're going to see what God is saying. The nations, everybody has a part to play. Israel's part is supposed to be the righteous nation in rulership. How's that for everyone? Let's keep reading. The Lord thy God have not suffered thee so to do. The the Most High didn't allow us to do that. That's what the word suffer mean. Come on. Verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, and to him ye shall hearken. So Moses given direct instructions. Is, is someone's going to be raised up of thy brethren. Like unto me, just like you listening to me, you better hearken unto him. Read on. Verse 16. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God and Horeb, and the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, Hmm. neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. Come on. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Speak unto them. Unto who? Israel. That's why every time you look at Christ, nobody, they can't stay with Christ. They're going to have to say, you know what they're going to know what people say? Oh, but you know what? After the cross now, because the goal was automatically for Christ to go to Israel to purge them of their sins, to get their minds out of the customs of the heathen, of the nations and back focused on the most high. That's the goal. Period. Read on. Verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words 
which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So you don't, so you inherently don't want to follow Christ. You don't want to listen to Christ. So in, so what you do is you try to attach yourself to what his movement was about. His movement is about getting Israel to stop sinning, to save his people from their sins. That's his whole movement. So how did his movement automatically change to something else? If his whole movement, everything Christ stood for, go to Israel, say you got to come out of y'all got to come for breaking the commandments. Yeah, now you got that now they well they go to letters which they don't understand. They go to letters which they don't understand. The letters are missions, but the the point is the leader of the mission is Christ. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 23. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, and verse 23. Uh -huh. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. From the fractions of the governments, the nations that set up, the, the even the many ones, the Bible is saying truly in vain is salvation hoped from, from, for from the hill. Come on. From the hills. And from the multitude of mountains. Why? Truly in the Lord, our God, is the salvation of Israel. You mean every single person. Truly in the Lord, our God, is the salvation of Israel. So what people tend to do, because you read this, and then you, well, this is what people do. They go, well, uh, yeah, salvation is for Israel. But, <laughs> but, see the problem? But, 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 yeah, I know. It's saying it's vain because the whole scope of salvation is for Israel to be put back into the proper place where, where it's attended to. It's attended for the sons of God to be restored back into what was supposed to be in the beginning, even with Adam. Sons of God, supposed to be rulers. So it has nothing to do with this grand scheme of uh, Christianity. Christianity has a, salvation for Christianity is a scheme. It's a scheme. It's, it's an ideology. It's a money maker. You're not, you're going to go to hell. You're, you're not saved. You need salvation. Bring us this money. <laughs> Sow a seed. And what this does for our people who are stuck in that mind state, this is a very uncomfortable subject for you because you are stuck in what we call Stockholm Syndrome. You're stuck in a, in a, in a childlike mind. So this should be, you should be squirming. Turn the camera off. Click the computer. Do something. Won't you pray to to uh God to shine the light on this? And then the only thing gonna happen is you're gonna realize that this is the truth. Because we keep going back to Christ. That's what we keep doing. Read it again. Jeremiah chapter three and verse twenty three. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills mm. and from the multitude of mountains. Truly, and the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. So Israel has not been get, having, having obtained the, the physical part of going, okay, you're saved from your enemies. You're still living that right now. So there has to be a deliverance. That's attached to salvation. Okay. Let's go to Baruch chapter 4. And verse 21. We touching, we're touching this, but I know for um, 
for some folks that are you supposed to be a men of God mm -hmm. or women of God, whatever you want, mm -hmm. however you want to, whatever lines you want to lay upon, mm -hmm. we can sit down and have a, a a discussion, and we can discuss the to in totality why Christ had to come. Period. He had to come because Israel was in the midst of sin and they were oppressed because whenever we sin God delivers us to the hands of the enemies you can't deny that we can have a discussion in totality about that mm -hmm. all right but here comes deliverance here comes what people want out of the salvation let's go the B book of Baruch chapter 4 verse 21 be of good cheer O my children come on Cry unto the Lord, <coughs> and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. Uh, of who? Of the enemies. Of the enemies. Of the enemies. You, you ha if you have a problem with someone with the Bible saying you have enemies, then you have a problem with the Bible. You can't just say, oh, Satan is the enemy. You can't say that. The Bible is clearly showing you you have enemies. We know that Satan only has no power to do only but that which God tells him to do, what he allows him to do. So you can't say that because God is allowing that. So who is your enemies? We, we prove that. Read on. Verse 22. For my hope is in the everlasting. Come on. That he will save you. That he will save you. Come on. And joy. Is coming to me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. You hear that? The mercy. So now mercy is given to Israel. So uh, you brothers and sisters that come in, you start to learn, okay, I'm following Christ. What does that absolutely mean? That means now we're going to do the words of what Christ said. Christ said, uh, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, ye shall do also. Christ kept commandments. You need to follow Christ and keep commandments. It's real simple. As he delivered them, how he showed it. Read on. Verse 23. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping. Because we're, Israel is in captivity for not having that mercy, for being breaking the commandments. Now we went into captivity. And we obtained the mercy through Christ to get ourselves back together and not stay in this deplorable state. Come on. But God will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. How is he going to do that? Read verse 24. Like as now, the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. So all the nations have seen our captivity. Mm -hmm. They've seen that. Nobody's ignorant of it. Everybody know about slavery. All over the other countries, we showed this through the course of years. They with with uh even in uh Europe mm -hmm. when they do uh swarthy Pete and mm -hmm. mocking you and all kind of things and swarthy make per they got uh slave parades, mm -hmm. all kind of stuff. They boast it. They boast in it. Mm -hmm. You was, they saw your captivity. Read. So shall they see shortly. Your salvation. So who? Are, so so if you that if that's if it's talking about your captivity, and then say shortly shall they see your salvation, it's a separation. <laughs> come on, from our God. Come on, which shall come upon you with great glory, brightness of the everlasting. So salvation has to be granted. This is a this is in the Bible. They have to be able to see salvation. Oh, they got these these people right here who's God's chosen people who keep commandments in Christ can be delivered. We go back into their rightful state. It's other things, but keep this in mind. Read on. Verse 25. My children, uh -huh. suffer patiently. Do what? Suffer patiently. So be patient. Be patient. Come on. The wrath that has come upon you from God. You see what where it came from? The the curses? The wrath came from God because we broke commandments. Come on. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction. Who's? Wait a minute. Hold on. 
So I asked I asked some brothers this question uh, a couple days back. Not they not without they not in the mind state of Israel. The question that I had posed is I said so. This all inclusive thing that we got with uh you know everybody Christianity or you know anybody in that school of thought let's include everybody. I asked the question I said so is God was in the let's go back to the beginning did God attend. Because God know all things, right? Did he attend for everyone to have an opportunity to obtain salvation, to be a, be a part of this, to be saved? They said, yes. God attended for everyone. Through Abraham, all the nations are blessed. It's like, man, what about Obadiah then? <laughs> what about the book of Obadiah? We forgot about the book of Obadiah. Because did God not attend for somebody? Maybe let's read it. Go there. It says, shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. Is that the, that's not our Bible. God is talking. That's directly in the book. There's a problem with your ideology. It's a problem. You have a problem because if you, they told me God, this is what's the thing. God attended for everybody, everyone to obtain the salvation and to be, uh, to be a part of Christ. All right. Start at verse one. It's a little sharp book. They should oh. be able to read it. Okay. Obadiah, verse one. The vision of Obadiah. Thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. <clears throat> now, the, now the crazy people are going, mm -hmm. I knew they were going to go to Obadiah. <laughs> I knew that. Mm. Well, put in the comment boards where Obadiah mm -hmm. getting his words from right here. It's somewhere else in the Bible too. Read. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Uh -huh. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Come on. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. They saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Come on. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, said the Lord. If these came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the great grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? So what the Bible is showing us here, shouldn't a thief leave some grapes? Shouldn't he leave a crumb? But with Esau, he take everything. He's every person. He's everything. He's the dictator of with the name Storms. He's the dictator to who's going who going into space, who's going to set satellites up. He's the dictator of how we're going to set the roads up. He's a dictator of all type of little nuance of things. Oh, what creatures that we're going to put on the endangered species list? Well, you should know you're killing all of them. <laughs> you got the hunting society. All these things is set up politics, all this. Cornered off. How is it sought up? How the hidden things sought out? Because he's got everything. That's why. And people follow the ideology, even within the scriptures. Even within the scriptures. His ideology reigns supreme. People go to, they go, well, you know, uh, let's go to the concordance and uh, what, see what it says here in the concordance that this is God's supreme mercy upon mankind. The Bible is showing you directly what it means. It gives its own definitions. This is why after, there's, a, there's some stages that you folks are not aware of. After you start, you, you hear this truth, you go through a metamorphosis. You start slowly trickling. If you don't believe, especially you just trickle out. 
And what happens to you is eventually you will not believe the Bible. Mm-hmm. You won't believe this. You just go, you will go by because certain things are not going to make sense to you because the Bible read outside of the context of the Bible it will, will contradict itself all day. How God opened it up for everybody, but yet he's now condemning a whole nation to doom. Mm-hmm. How you go into Hebrews and say, no, it repentance is for everyone. You go into Hebrews and say, Esau is found, he can't get repentance. But somehow it's for everybody. <laughs> God work in mysterious ways. Shut up. <laughs> Read on. <laughs> Verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. That deceived thee. Come on. And prevailed against thee. Come they on. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. Because although he's setting up all this and taking everything, the Lord is the one that's controlling this. He going to set the nations up to come against them. Come on. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, said the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mouth of Esau? So the, so the top people who you hold as the best of their scholars, the Bible is saying they don't have understanding. This is why the hot debate is going to always be, oh, well, Esau already got destroyed already. When did that happen? Doing the Maccabees. Well, how come Herod is an Edomite? Mm-hmm. How come he's an Idumean? Mm-hmm. Read on. It was say, oh, brother, he's a Nabataean. Stop. <laughs> Cold word, he's still an Edomite from the area of the Nabataeans. <laughs> Read on. Verse 9. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mouth of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Now, it can't say that because because Christ is coming and he has to, it's for it's salvation. They can be saved. Let's give him a remix. Verse 9. <laughs> and thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mouth of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Uh, I think we need to exegete this. J- Jake, I think this needs to be a, this. we need to exegete the text. So Esau <laughs> is slotted to be cut off by the slaughter. Is that salvation? But I mean, let's just, even if you want to stop right there, if you want to go, you know what? But yeah, they have to be, they, no, this is, they, where did Christ come in at for this? Where did Christ come in to stop this and give them salvation? Verse 10. Let's read on. Verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. So that's what's feeling. That's and and let me say this: the Bible is a true book. So for the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. You gotta ask yourself a question. We're bringing out Obadiah, and we're exposing what you know what Edom has done. If you're feeling shame, you might be an Edomite. 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 Read on. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, uh-huh. and thou shalt be cut off forever. Christ can, it's not, it's not, can't be forever. And thou shalt be cut off forever. Shouldn't they have, this can't be. Got, verse 10. Salvation. Verse 10. For thy violence, he's very violent, isn't he? Against our brother Jacob, as we do know, Jacob covers the 12 tribes of Israel. Whether it was the southern kingdom with us, 
with the English, with the lynchings, the rapings, the stuff that's still going on, whether it's our Hispanic brothers and sisters who are being uh, cut up and being forced to serve siege of Borgia, for thy vows against our brother Jacob, shame is shame because they don't want to acknowledge it. Every time they bring it up, it's always a problem. It's always controversial. But they can always celebrate their pagan holidays to celebrate the destruction of our people. Mm. Shame shall cover thee, and thou shall be cut off forever. Ever, 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 ever. Shame shall cover thee. So mm-hmm. that's but so mm-hmm. so for Israel, you're not gonna be ashamed. Right. 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 You now should let's be. go there. Isaiah forty five seventeen. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Come on. With an everlasting salvation. Come on. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So if Israel's going to be the one that get the salvation, we always pull it, especially when you brothers going over John 3.16. Israel is the one that gets the, that's going to be saved in the Lord. Saved in the Lord. With an everlasting salvation. What is everlasting salvation? Let's see who's thinking. Go ahead, Uriah. Somebody get him a mic. Um, everlasting. You think about uh, everlasting righteousness, which is in the law, and then uh, eternal life, everlasting salvation. You know, rulership. Salvation. What is it to be saved? Saved from your enemies. You got to be saved from your enemies. So if Israel is going to be has an everlasting salvation, can any enemy come upon Israel ever again? No. That's the point. So with us, what we're saying is that as you start to look at the Bible, as you start to look at the Bible, it's always pointing back to the Israelites being saved, having salvation from enemies. From different, all the different threats that Israel had, including themselves. Go ahead. You think salvation was just during that time? Let's find out. Let's go to the book of Maccabees, 1 Maccabees, chapter 3. And I want to start at verse um, verse 3. Because this is a brother from the tribe of Levi. We just basically celebrated it, right? Let's find out is salvation dealing with him. First Maccabees chapter three verse three. First Maccabees chapter three and verse three. Go ahead. So he got his people, his great, people, his people, nobody else. Go ahead. Great honor, mm-hmm. and put on a breastplate as a giant, mm. and girt his warlike harness about him, mm-hmm. and he made battles, protecting the host with his sword. Go ahead. In his acts, he was like a lion, mm. and like a lion's whelp, roaring for his prey. Mm-hmm. For he persuaded or pursued the wicked mm. and sought them out and burnt up those that vexed his people. Wait a minute. He didn't just hold hands. He said vex his people, right? Go ahead. Wherefore, the wicked shrunk for fear of him. They called that man the hammer because that's how devastating he was when he brought down the hammer. Go ahead. And all the workers of iniquity mm-hmm. were troubled mm-hmm. because of salvation prospered in his hand. What's prospered in his hand? Salvation prospered in his hand. Go ahead. He he grieved also many kings mm-hmm. and made Jacob glad mm. with his acts. And his memorial is blessed forever. He said made Jacob glad with all his acts. He didn't say everybody. So guess what? Salvation at this point also had nothing to do with the other nation. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, so to me, even <laughs> saying that, man, that's something to boast about. You better believe that. I mean, the salvation, uh, <laughs> you know, is for Israel. 
Because, I mean, anytime, for real, I mean, in this real talk, any brother that say you shouldn't boast or whatever the case may be in, in something like this, you, I mean, you don't have no pride for your nation or for your people. I mean, but why did Paul do it? Go to, um, go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 real quick, I believe. No, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse, um, verse 2. I believe that's what I wanted. Yeah, just real quick. I mean, let's, I guess just to see if there's a problem with, uh, I guess, with boasting. <laughs> okay. Which one you want? Start at 9 and verse, um, start at verse 1. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1. For it's touching the ministering to the saints. It is sup, suflu, uh, excuse me, superfluous for me to write to you. Meaning unnecessary. Mm -hmm. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast, to, boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. All right. So what he's saying right here says, for as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous. For me to write unto you, meaning unnecessary. For I know the forwardness, meaning the boldness of your mind. It says, for which I boast of you to write, to, um, that which, for which I boast of you mm -hmm. to them of Macedonia. So Paul is letting you know he was, all, he was confident right here in his brother. I mean, so with the scriptures, I mean, we should always be, you know, uh, have that boldness and that courage to stand and say who we are and even to teach that salvation is for us because the scriptures tells us not to give that which is holy unto the dogs. So if we know that the kingdom mm -hmm. is for Israel, mm -hmm. we know that this Bible is for Israel, mm -hmm. why wouldn't I not boast on that? Why wouldn't I not let people know that, look, you know, this is for us. That don't mean I got to walk up to the Edomite nations or the Moabite nations or whatever the case may be and 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 be, be wicked to them because – of the simple fact, we read in the scriptures yesterday in Romans, the scriptures command us if it be possible to be at peace with all men. So I deal with the other nations every day because of the type of work that I do. But if, if one of them come to me and start talking to me about the Bible, I'm going to, like the scriptures tells us how to be as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, I'm going to say, you know, this is not the time or place to talk about this. That's one thing that I don't talk about is politics and religion. Mm -hmm. And I'll leave it at that. But if they come up to me while we in our war zone at camp, I mean, the scriptures command me to cry loud and spare not. So, therefore, I'm going to do what I have to do according to the scriptures. So, don't let no brother never tell you not to boast in this. Because, he, I mean, the scriptures, we was boasted upon even reading Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The scriptures showed us that we are above all nations that are upon the face of this earth. So if the scriptures is letting us to be above all nations upon the earth, who are we to say that the other nations are equal to us? Let's keep reading. Yeah, keep, we'll, I got Go ahead. You go ahead and pick it up. I'll keep on reading. <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and read for you. Go ahead. It says, for I know the forwardness of your mind, which, were, which I boast of you to them mm -hmm. of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. And your boasting, your zeal. Because you're coming hard. Go ahead. Verse 3. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain. Mm -hmm. In this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. You may be ready, but go ahead, though. Lest happily, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, mm. we, that we say not, ye should be ashamed. In this same confident boasting. Because if you're not confident in what you believe in, you will be ashamed. But if we're confident, we ain't confounded. We're studying, we're applying, so we can boast upon that. Because we are we are a nation of kings and priests. So we're going to boast upon that. What's wrong with that? That's righteous boasting. Hey, Nothing real, wrong with real that. Real quick, one more, man. <laughs> Go to Isaiah 29 and verse 9 real quick. Because, because a lot of times what, what happened... What happened, you know, brothers fall off. I mean, and when you fall off, uh, sometimes you could be in the midst of sin, and that's why you're falling off. I mean, not to change the subject or whatever the case may be, this is still dealing with salvation. Because of the simple fact, if your mind is not truly in this, and you going into, you dealing with other stuff, you're not studying like you're supposed to. And the most I could have you 
Then, or, or your candlestick get put out. Next day, you know, you're believing that salvation is for the other nations. He'll teach this. Read real quick um, Isaiah 29, verse 9, real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Uh -huh. Stay yourselves in wonder. So keep studying, read. Cry ye out and cry. Uh -huh. They are drunken, uh -huh. but not with wine. Uh -huh. They stagger, uh -huh. but not with strong drink. So like the scripture says, they are drunken. It says, but not with wine. You got some brothers that don't even touch a bottle. But the wine that it's talking about is the philosophy, the doctrine that they are drunk with. It says, it says they stagger. When they stagger, they stagger with the scriptures because of the simple fact we know that who salvation is for. The scriptures tells you that salvation is for the Jews, for Israel. But the script, but right here it says they stagger, showing you they're staggering with the understanding. It says, but not with strong drink. They didn't even pick up the bottle, but they staggering. They're staggering because of the simple fact. They don't even have, no longer have an understanding of what the scriptures is talking about. They don't even understand who they are no more. So, I guess that's my quick rant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Because you got to think about this. The consensus is to take the name of Israel and make it no more in remembrance, right? Make the Take the name of Israel and make it no more in remembrance. So as you start to put up the nation, they go, that's boasting. It's not, bo it's not boasting. It's showing you, it, when you're saying something in truth, that's not boasting. Boasting is if we were saying um, using, using our nationality not to even keep commandments or to down other brothers or sisters or whatever, that would be boasting. But when you're proud of what the Most High has done, he sent Christ, he illuminated you back to who you are, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with you celebrating what God said at the highest level. There's nothing wrong with that. Because you're supposed to, when you come back to the Most High, you're supposed to give everything you have. All You're supposed to go all out. All right? You're not supposed to be partial with God, doing things halfway. So with Israel, we, are, we have been deceived by the by the serpent you bit and now you have poison in you so the poison that's in us is the philosophies the ideologies that everybody is the same everybody should be in pulled into god and doing all this when it makes no difference inherently we have an ultimate power and a creator you ain't escaping none of that nobody is but what we're setting up right now is what christ told us to do go and teach our people who they are go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go, don't go to the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why? They're going to say, oh, because it's to the Jew first. No, sir. What it meant, a tense of Judah is because the kingdom was broken up into two pieces. They were two kingdoms. So now, uh, inherently, because, and that, and that goes back to studying, y'all. You got to make sure you're studying the Bible and studying it correctly. When, when the kingdoms were being split into two, underneath Rehoboam and Jeroboam, Rehoboam was getting the armies together. They were going to kill them. They were going to kill them. They got stopped. Guess who stopped them? The Most High. What, what the Most High said, do not do this because this thing is of me. I'm splitting them up. So if God split them up, who going to put them back together? Exactly. That's what people don't understand. But, be, but because of lies and being bit by the serpent, you go off into madness and you believe inherently what you want to believe. Well, guess what? You are entitled to believe what you want to believe. You got to meet your maker. So, the, you know, believe what you want to believe what you want to believe. But ultimately, everybody has to go to the most high now the difference this is the difference the difference is when 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 somebody who's following the words as it is written following christ doing what he said when you stand before your maker you can go as it is written lord this is why we did this because we understood it like this so oh okay as it was written you well i feel lord <laughs> bye, -bye. bye 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 let's go verse one Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors 
that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, so the, the Lord. The sheep is the lost sheep of the house of Israel, like Christ said he came for. The pastors scatter that. How do you scatter the lost sheep? You bring in philosophies and doctrines and give it out to them. And now you scatter them from the mind state of God, from what God said for us to do. Come on. Verse 2, therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, yea, have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord. Come on. And I will gather the remnant of my flock. And I'm going to gather the remnant. So the, the visit is when the Lord returns back with fire. Now I'm going to gather the remnant of my flock. The ones who repent in Christ. I'm going to gather the remnant. Come on. Out of all countries. Come on. Where the eye have driven them. Stop. When, so Israel sinned and got driven into all countries, all nations. That's why when you get into to the Gospels, after the end, the Lord's leaving, he said, go into all nations. As a witness. Let this be a witness to all nations. Israel is in all nations. Read on. And will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Come on. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be likened, saith the Lord. Has this happened yet? I'm talking to any people. I don't care who you believe Israel is. This has not happened yet. Read on. Verse 5. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise up unto David a righteous branch. The righteous branch is Christ. Like when you go in Zechariah, another prophecy on him. They call him the branch. I'm going to raise up unto David a righteous branch. You know, folks don't understand prophecies, man. This is Christ. Come on. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment uh -oh. and justice in the earth. Watch this. Pay attention. Read. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Shall be what? Shall be saved. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Read. And Israel shall dwell safely. I don't know how you're going to even get around this stuff. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord God. Where is it saying anyone else? Read on. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. Keep reading. Therefore be Wait a minute. Say the Lord our righteousness. Hold that. There's another evil thing that people do, especially that has a mind state to be in Christianity or house everyone. You outside the, the uh, ideology of God. Period. You in your own ideology. This is the evil thing. Give me 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. 1 John 3 and 7. This is where, this is the, this is, don't let nobody deceive you for how you following Christ. How you keeping commandments. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. Come on. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. Little children. You Israelites who have repented in Christ have become new creatures in Christ. Little children. Come on. Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. Let nobody deceive you. Come on. He that doeth righteousness. Somebody who's keeping the commandments. Because somebody that's doing righteousness keeps commandments in Christ. He that what? Doeth righteousness. Read. Is righteous. Even as he is righteous. See, that's what people try to do when they go off into madness, try to go and say, well, you brothers are self-righteous. <laughs> or you brothers are trying to say about the law. Or you brothers are, um, are making this about the law. Never once did we say that. We're making it about Christ in the keeping of the commandments. Like it says in the last book of the Bible, you have to have the commandments and the faith of Christ. Period. Those things have to be together. You can't omit the Old Testament. You can't omit the New Testament. You can't break them off into pieces. You have to speak to the law and to the testimony. Go back. Drop 
Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Does anybody know? Because we just read in, the, in his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. He's going to bring those nations back under one. Does anybody understand when it says in verse 7, therefore? The word therefore means as result of. So as result of Israel being and Judah being saved, therefore, behold, the days come. This hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. That they should no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel. Out of the land of Egypt. Isn't that still being said today? <laughs> you turn on your news or your your uh, channels. They're talking about uh, Passover. They're talking about uh, Israel going through the Red Sea, the plagues of Egypt. <laughs> all that is still being said. So th obviously this hasn't came to pass yet. Mm -mm. And also this should show you some type of salvation is going to be so high scale that you can't even... You're not going to even be talking about what he did. In the Red Sea ain't going to even come on your mind. Mm -mm. Read on. Verse 8. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel. Nah, no, stop. Stop. Because that did, now we're, we, we, I got a problem. Mm -hmm. I got a problem. Which led the seed. It's not about the seed, brother. <laughs> it's about the spirit. So you gonna oh, you just want to wipe this out because I we just asked this hasn't happened yet, so now God's saying the seed. This is why they don't want Israel to be no more in remembrance, man. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to be. You're not an Israelite. <laughs> it's too powerful. It's way too powerful. It's, it, soon you come and il get illuminated, and you go, oh, I get it. The nation's going to be put back on top. The nation's going to be put back in righteous order. We showed last night uh, women in Africa. I, I didn't, we didn't show y'all all the clips because we could have showed all the nations, the women of the nation, how they would, how did each nation had women that was beating their kids senseless. You think that's going to happen underneath the righteous nation, under Christ and the Israelites? That's not going to happen. It's going to be a righteousness. So the earth hates that. They don't want that. So what happens is if you don't like that posture right there, you have to now start doing the universalism. Don't worry about uh, how Israel keeps commandments. Don't worry about none of that. I agree with Israel being God's chosen people. That's the, that's the consensus. All the while, I, so we've done this so many years. Mm -hmm. I've talked to scholars and bishops and deacons, everyone. And you get down to one point and they go, well, I'm not disputing Israel being on top. Sir, we're not disputing none of this. What we're saying is that there's an order to things and that Israel is going to be saved because they're the ones that upside down. The, Israel is outside of the God's orders, period. And anybody that says that they're not, they're ignorant. Read on. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 8. But the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where the eye have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. So the north country, because north of Israel, you had Assyria. Did that happen during the time of the Assyrians? Did they bring back? Uh, in the time of Christ, did Christ take the Israelites from the north country mm -hmm. and bring them back into their land? Hasn't happened yet. So irregardless, somebody going, let's include everybody in. These prophecies still ain't fulfilled. How are you going to include and teach people how to live holy and righteously, and your own nation ain't holy and righteous right now. You can't even be holy and righteous in the midst of 10 people. Somehow you want to bring everybody in. 
Somehow, somehow everybody has salvation. But I'm gonna show you where how the how the mind state works. Give me the clip. Give me the clip. Let's go with the definition of you. Let's let's show who they love. No, the other one. When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're saved. We pass from a state of death to life. This brings dramatic change to everything about us. But is this change something you can feel? Particularly in the moments after you repent and believe. Perhaps you've wondered about this and have doubted your salvation as a result. So let's look at the email on the subject and then talk about it. And the email reads, are you supposed to feel something when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. At first, I was not sure of myself, so I kept on confessing my sins and accepting Him as Lord whenever I heard an altar call. What should I be feeling, and how can I know for sure? Well, let me say, first of all, feelings at salvation differ. In fact, the longer you've lived in sin, more than likely, the more intense that feeling is going to be when all of a sudden you trust Christ as your Savior, the burden is rolled away, and you have a new sense of freedom and a new desire for the Word of God and a desire for other salvation. There is no certain feeling. It's not about feeling. It's about faith. You repented. You believed. You are saved. Feelings change. How can you know? Listen to this passage in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Here we if go. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Stop. That is when you place your... Stop. Stop. What is it to believe, though? You confess. That's the, that's the whole thing. When somebody go up, it's, this happens all across the country, in all the churches. It's, it's, they now going to bring people up. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Mm. You want that? Oh, yeah, let's go there. I was going to say something, but I'm, I'm trying to be good today. I was going to say an evil Mr. Rogers, but Romans 10. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So with your mouth, you're going to confess unto faith. You're going to confess unto salvation. You're going to do that with your mouth, right? Okay, come on. Because remember, the Lord say, don't honor him with your mouth, mm -hmm. but your heart far from him. So you can't just be giving lip service. So you confess with your mouth, come on. And shall believe thine heart, in thine heart, that God have raised him up from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. What is it, Minister Nathaniel, help us out. What is it to, is to believe? Because you confess with your mouth, and it said, believe in your heart. We know the heart is the mind. Let's go to the um, book of uh, John, chapter 7, verse 38 first. 7 and verse 38. And then also in Sirach, uh, what is it, Sirach 32 and 12, uh, 20 and 24. Let's go to John seven thirty-eight. perfect. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. All right, the book of John, chapter 7. In verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So it says, he that believeth on me, believeth on Christ, meaning what? You keep in the commandments of spirit and truth. You understand. First, you got you to understand who you are first, once you come into repentance. Because this word, this scriptures, these laws, Christ only came for Israel first and foremost. So you got to first understand who you are. And then as you're doing, you got to start applying the scriptures, start learning, and then believing on Christ as it is written, as an Israelite. So once you have the understanding, you believe in on Christ, you're truly repenting, getting yourself straight, your mind, you're going to open up, so much things going to open up to you, just like David says, you know, uh, open down my eyes so I may behold wondrous things out of that law. So when you under, have the proper understanding of the law, and then also, what is it, Sirach chapter uh, 24? Sirach 32, 32, 24. 32, 24, yeah. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiastes, 
chapter 34, verse, I mean 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord, take it heed to the commandment. So it says, he that believeth on the Lord, take heed to the commandments. So as the scripture says, you got a couple of both. You got it to the law and to the testimony. And we know that the testimony is of Christ. So you got to believe in full context of the Bible that you are Israelite and that you got to keep the laws through Christ and truly repent to those through our spirit and truth. Mm. Uriel, perfect. There's a stipulation when you say you believe. It's an action. I just wanted to throw another <laughs> another scripture in there for believe. It's in the Old Testament. Psalms 119, verse 66. Psalms 119 and verse 66. The book of Psalms. Chapter 119 and verse 66. And it says here. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. So let me speak to uh, the other side. Let me speak to the other side. Because you have schools of thoughts, y'all. This is what you have to do when, you are, um, when you're on our side. Mm -hmm. When I mean our side, we see the scriptures. We know the Bible's going to give the definition of what it really means. We're not going to just go, oh, well, I guess believe means, you know, you said that you, you, you love Christ. Well, belief... Folks, for you folks on the other side, what belief translates to us is that we see what Christ did. We see his walk. We see how he gave the, the commandments at a high level, and we apply those same commandments that was throughout the whole Bible. We apply them in the faith of Christ. That's belief. Not that we see that, oh, uh, Christ did this, but we don't have to do it because what we do is we see that uh, Paul was saying, you know, to the Galatians that uh, works is uh, not, you can't do works. Works is dead. <laughs> not understanding what those works really transpired to. Now, I'm going to show you something, you folks on the other side. Let's show you a little bit of, real quick. Because faith, salvation, to be saved is directly attached to how you apply Christ to your life, period. The works that you do, you will be judged for those things. Don't let anybody deceive you. If you're deceived thinking that something simple as you understanding when I'm when I'm reversing a uh, prophecy, when I'm praying for a woman, let me cover my head. Something simple as that, that in your mind might be so trivial and simple that you omit. But you have now known that God gave the order through Christ. You go, I don't want to do that. Is that really your belief? Is that really you believing in Christ and walking in Christ? No, it's not. And that's what people do in Christianity. You omit those things. But when you have a different spirit on you, it reminds you, it teaches you of all things. Whatsoever I said unto you, go, okay, well, wow, the Lord said to do things like this. Now, Let's just show you a little example of uh, of works for somebody who don't know. Go to first. Go to John because we quoted it. John fourteen and twelve. Then I'm gonna ask when we are gonna read Matthew chapter twenty three because that's gonna tie in what we was talking about boasting. All right. John 14 and verse 12. The book of St. John, chapter 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. So Christ kept commandments, did he not? Okay, so let Christ give us a definition out of his mind what works is. Go to Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Now pay very close attention. Come on. Say Matthew chapter 23 and verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. To his students, come on. Saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They sit in Moses' seat. 
breed. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Do everything they tell you, observe and observe and do. Because they're going to tell you to do the commandments. Read on. But do not ye after their works. So what's the, uh, let's exegete this. So he's saying, do what they tell you to do, but don't do after their works. The word that y'all want to underline in your Bibles and highlight right now is their works. Let's find out what that means. Come on. For they say and do not. For they say and they do not. Hmm. Come on. Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. So this is that boasting spirit that you don't want to be in. You don't want to be in this type of spirit because that makes you a hypocrite. Now watch this. Come on. Verse 5. But all their works. I like that word works again. Now we have an understanding coming up higher. But all their works. Come on. They do for to be seen of men. Let's read. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. So works, that's fringes. That's fringes. Christ said they do their works, which is keeping the commandments the way they keep the commandments with the fringes. That's works. So nobody could go, oh, you're wearing fringes. You don't need to do that. Christ said all their works. You understand what works in context? Let's, exegete, let's do, use our exegesis on this scripture. Works in this context would be the fringes that they're wearing. But they were doing it in a wrong spirit. They were doing it to be seen of men. They were doing it doing it to be boastful. We're not doing that. We're not doing it to be boastful. We're doing it in the spirit of Christ. We're doing it because the Lord said to do it. Well, they say, well, show me where Christ wore fringes. Well, it's very simple, sir. The woman just tried to touch the hem of his garment. Simple. And if Christ did wear fringes, what would he be in the midst of? And we know he never sinned. Because <laughs> fringes is a law. I don't know how you're going to get around that. How can you get around that? Because you because he's he's without sin. If you go to so Christ said the works that I do, mm -hmm. he shall do also. So the Lord wore fringes. You need to wear them exactly. With the border of blue, it's simple. But we know that the ultimate tool of the fringe was to make you, remind you to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. How to you know remind you don't sin, don't break God's laws. So if that transcends to now Christ, which is the Holy Spirit teaching you and reminding you of all things, you should put them on with the understanding that Christ is the one that's reminding us to keep the commandments. Jake, what you got? Let's read verse 6. Verse 6. And love the uppermost rooms and feasts and the chief seats in the synagogue. <laughs> Yeah, this is why the boasting, that's why people get it confused. You see Israel now coming back to who you are. The sisters come out, they're shining. <laughs> you got, uh, they got the best things on. They put jewels on their heads. <laughs> they're, they're, they got the, the elaborate fringe design and works and all kind of stuff. And you see brothers putting on the beautiful garments and coming, coming out and, and doing it. But it has to still be done in the spirit of Christ. Right. But ain't nothing wrong with that if you're doing it in the spirit of Christ. You got your mic, Nathaniel? And what it sounds like is the bum right doctrine is coming back around. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. You know. You don't kick the ant pile, Nathaniel. <laughs> hey, Nathaniel Ben Israel at gmail.com. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Email. <laughs> so soon you start mentioning the bum right doctrine, everybody get mad now. But the point still goes back is that the works that we're supposed to be doing is in Christ. And those works that we're doing is because we believe, and that belief translates into what? Faith. And that faith translates into somebody keeping the commandments in Christ and obtaining salvation. It's really simple. Let's go to Psalms chapter 3. Amen. 
in verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 3 and verse 6. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me round about. So, now, you got to think about the mind state of this. He said, I'm not going to be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me round about. Not going to be afraid of that. Something got to be with, if you got that type of spirit on you, something else, there's a higher power with you. Come on. Verse 7, arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God. But thou was smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou was broke of the teeth of the ungodly. Of the ungodly. Come on. Salvation. Salvation what? Belongeth unto the Lord. Come on. Thy blessing is upon thy people. What, not, say no, love. everybody. Uh, the blessing, thy blessing is upon thy people. Say law. So as you start to understand, even within the scope of salvation, um, it's always attached to Israel. It's always attached to Israel, not going anywhere, all right? And because that salvation had to come to them, go to John 4. You guys know the scripture. John 4. Verse 22. Matter of fact, start up above with this. Twenty one. Start there. <laughs> the book of St. John, chapter four, verse twenty one. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. A lot of folks worship what they don't understand. You just in a blind state, worshiping and not understanding. Like this woman, she did not understand this. Wouldn't what did she not understand? Read. We know what we worship. Why? For salvation is of the Jews. You got a problem. The Lord said this. You have a problem with this this statement right here. Salvation is of the Jews, and I'm gonna show you why you have a problem. I'm gonna show you exactly why you have a problem. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I, all you folks out there, we you got a problem right now. Because here's what you got to ask yourself a question. If salvation is of the Jews, for, so now let's pull it back into what, what a lot of y'all brothers and sisters believe in Christianity is inherently everybody has an opportunity. But Christ said salvation is of the Jews. Okay. The book of Revelation. Chapter 2 and verse 9, I know thy works and tribulation. I know your works and tribulation. Everybody in tribulation? Mm -hmm. Read. And poverty. Everybody in poverty? What's, listen, poverty is you not having enough money to put gas in your tank. <laughs> That's not just poverty. Poverty is being as a nation without your homeland, without your nationality, without your heritage, without the love of the nation. That's poverty. As a nation of people, we don't have anything to say, we're going to do this as a nation of people ourselves. We're going to dictate our roads. What we want is we don't want roads to go this way. We want our roads to be built like this. We don't want street lights like this. We want our street lights to be like that. We can, as a nation of people, we should have that opportunity for our lands to do that, but we don't. And if somebody's so simple to think that even Haiti has that, the UN rolling all around Haiti. Read. But thou art rich. But the Lord said you are rich. How, how come you are rich? Because you're not just rich in spirit in the repentance of Christ, but the point is you have that ability to obtain that. Read. And I know the blasphemy. Of them which say they are Jews and are not. Wait a minute. Hold on. It shouldn't matter because there's no, no such thing as Jew or Greek, brother. I know the blasphemy 
of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. What's got to happen then? Somebody, somebody, something wrong. Somebody got, something's wrong right there. Because there's no difference between Jew or, Jew or Greek, because that's what people use for to bring everybody underneath. Then how come the Lord is saying there's some blasphemy going on about those who say that they are Jews and they're not? But, but he says, say, but he says it again. Yeah, let's go to three and nine. There's three and nine. He says it again. He's more definitive this time. The Revelation chapter three verse nine. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. But do lie. Jew saying that you are a, that you are the Jews in in even in that time period, you're the southern kingdom. But do lie. Re Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. You got a problem. Because <laughs> cause let's say somebody that's saying that they uh, are the Jews and they believe on Christ. How's that possible? The Lord is showing you that there's a separation, y'all. There's a separation. Something is being separated here in due life. He said he's going to make them to come and worship before your feet. Mm. It says... And to know that I have loved thee. Well, what? I think God loves everybody. I have loved thee. So you have a problem. All right. So now, how do we work this out? How do we work these things out? Like, how do you how do you get back on track? You have to get back on track by understanding, number one, like it says in 1 Kings 8, to bethink yourself. To come back unto the understanding of, of who you are first. Start understanding that. And then getting yourselves together underneath Christ and the keeping of the commandments. You're not going to be able to escape this. All right. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah. Just another one. I got to pull a controversial there's got to be some controversy in here, too. Let's go to 66. Seriously, Isaiah 66. Some brothers uh, that's, that pushes, you know, that, that, that ideology, you know, they screaming for, uh, they love the I book of Isaiah, too, especially when it comes to Gentiles. Somehow, magically, they think Isaiah is for the Gentiles or something. Start at verse 18. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 18. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations in tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. So they're going to gather all nations in tongues, and they're going to come and see his glory. Keep that in mind. Come on. I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. Come on. Tar Tarshish, Peul, Lud, that draw the bow to Tubal, and Javan, to the isles afar off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they should declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they're going to declare my glory among the Gentiles. Okay. Sounds good so far, doesn't it? That's everybody in your mind. Read on. Verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren. Well, stop. Hold on. No, hold on. That's something wrong now. Soon that statement go out. And they shall bring all your brethren. These Gentiles going to bring all your brethren. Read. For an offering unto the Lord out of all nations. Stop. An offering unto the Lord means what? Let me see who's thinking. Y'all put in the comment boards. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. An uh, offering for the Lord means what? How are they going to be able to bring all your brethren out of all these nations and do it for an offering of the Lord? How is that possible? Leobard, boy, boy. 
are offering. What are you doing? Are you offering up sacrifices? Spiritual sacrifices. So you are you are that reasonable sacrifice. You that offering. When you repent in Christ, you become that sacrifice, that offering. You walk in just like Christ. That's your reasonable service. That's your spiritual sacrifices. That's acceptable. So you, my friend, have found out that the brethren, the Israelites, you are offering. Your service, the way you conduct yourself, the way you follow Christ, the way that the world, and the world hates this. But for you, this is vexing. But you have to go through this. That's your reasonable service. That's your that's you offering up spiritual sacrifices unto the most high acceptable by Jesus Christ. We're the offering. Read. Out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules. When did this happen? Let's exegete this. Did this ever happen yet? This hasn't happened. So all these things that the prophets is looking at is going, okay, they're going to bring your brother in as an offering out of all these nations. Where's everybody else at? He should have said, well, you know what? The Gentiles, the, the all of you guys, everybody's going to be right here. They're going to bring you as an offering out. Come on. And upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, said the Lord. As the children of Israel. As what? As the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel. Your body supposed to be a clean vessel because who dwells in it? Christ. Read. And to the house of the Lord. Hmm. Yeah, I got a problem with that. <laughs> so that if you're going to be brought to the house of the Lord, isn't the house of the Lord for the strangers and everybody, isn't it for all people? <laughs> strangers supposed to be able to take partake in everything, right? Well, let's go to uh, good old Joel, chapter three and verse seventeen. The book of Joel. Chapter 3 and verse 17. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. So it seemed to be that a lot of um, folks in Christianity, they bypass certain things in the scriptures and they what they do is they blame Christ they blame what Christ did they go Christ came he laid down his life now all men can uh can be saved all men you know even the strangers even those who were strangers not realize what they what you folks don't realize is the strangers really the Israelites who were cast off that's why Paul had to keep reiterating God cast away his people no how could you say if God cast away his people, you got Jews standing right there? What people is he talking about? Hmm. Let's go to um let's go to Book of Mark. Gotta clear another thing up. Let's, let's clear another thing up. Yeah. These are I'm just clearing some scriptures up that I know. A lot of you folks online, a lot of folks struggle with these things because you have the illusion of inclusion. You want to <laughs> include everybody. I, I use uh, good old Jesse now. That's a part of the problem. We just read about the about what they would, you know, what they did. Uh, we got a commenter. We got some. We we got a commenter. I knew it was gonna bring one out. Pull up his comment real quick. Pull up his comment, Yamir. Let's read him. 
Let's go ahead on and read them real quick. We, are, we get one of you. All right. All right. Good old, let me see who it is. Uh, oh, Don Don. Don Shepard. Don Shepard. Shalom, brothers. The most misunderstood subject is salvation. Here's the thing. Scripture don't lie. The death of Christ was for Israel alone. We know this, but because of but, but because of the unbelief and rebellion of Israel caused the Gentile nations to get a chance. Chance of salvation. Chill. All right, where was that? The death of Christ was for Israel alone. We know this, but because of the unbelief and rebellion of Israel caused the Gentile nations to get a chance at salvation. We know this because Deuteronomy 32 and 21, Isaiah 49 and 6, Romans 9 and 24, we as Israel shouldn't be ignorant of prophecy. We use all the wrong precepts to explain why the heathen, heathen isn't part of this salvation. You guys are teaching in error. Um, so what did he say right there? He said the, he said the death of Christ was for Israel alone. We know this. So how, so how did anybody else get a chance? He contradicted himself. He said the death of Christ is for Israel alone. But. <laughs> because of unbelief and rebellion of Israel caused Gentile nations to get a chance. At, so it won't for Israel alone then. If somebody else get a chance. You know something? You know what? Since he said that, I want to go to. I want to go to. And we're going to go to those scriptures that he put up there. I, wanna, I, wanna, wanna, I want him to explain this one, though. Let's go to the last book of the Bible, the last book, all right? And I want to ask a simple fundamental question. I want to go to the revelation, the revealing of <laughs> chapter 21, verse 12. I want him to explain something to me, all right? Let's, let's go with it, brother. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, and verse 12. And Matter of fact, let's start at verse, um, so you can understand what we're talking about. Um, go Start at verse 10, brother. Right, verse 10. Uh -huh. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, mm. the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It's going to look so beautiful that it's going to look like it came from heaven. Go ahead. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, mm -hmm. even like a jasper stone. Clear as crystal. Go ahead. And had a wall great and high. Mm -hmm. And had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. And manners writ, I'm sorry, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now, I want to know where in the world is the Gentile gate? <laughs> yeah, answer that question. I, wanna, I, want, I want them to ask that question. Cause where answer that question right quick, Don. Where's the Gentile gate at? Right quick, answer that question right quick. Give you 10 seconds. You're on the keyboard right now. Because you asked how is that contradictory. It's contradictory because you said salvation is for Israel alone. It's something for somebody alone, how somebody else going to get it. It's so it's obvious y'all don't understand them scriptures that y'all posted. Y'all don't understand Romans 11. A brother put up um, Romans 3 and 29. That's the Jew and Gentile scripture. I'm going to ask you, who are the Jews? Hmm. Then you'll figure out who the Gentiles are. Y'all don't know the scriptures as good as y'all y'all think. Y'all y'all not well studied. Y'all just not. That's just the truth of it. I don't know where the Gentile gave that. Don Shepard said, gotcha. Do gotcha. He said, gotcha. Do gotcha mean you're going to tell us what gate they're going through, or are you saying you understand? I don't understand gotcha. Give you um 12 more seconds right quick. Because you said the Gentiles coming through, dude. Kingdom has 12 gates. While we're, I'm going to say this while waiting. Just like if you're a delivery, some of y'all do Uber Eats and all that. 
if you're going down a community, say you don't have the address right, but you have the last name of the person. You're going through a prominent community, and all of them got gates. You're looking for Smith, and all these gates have name on it. Are you going to go to Johnson Gate? <laughs> Are you going to go to Taylor Gate? No. You're going to go through Smith Gate because that's their gate. So in the kingdom is 12 gates with the 12 tribes of Israel. You're saying Gentiles can get in. What gate? Answer it. The Gentiles are part of the kingdom as servants. We agree with that. That's not salvation. We agree. It's not salvation, bro. So that's where I, I said it in the opening. If you rewind, if you when y'all rewind this video, I said the definition of salvation everybody thinks is always wrong because they have a diff. He said they're going to be servants. Okay. So what he's saying is he's thinking that we're going salvation is according to death. Remember I said that's one part of it. Salvation is to be saved from your enemies and to be put back on top to rule in righteousness. This is where we have a problem. Now let's go to Romans 11. Let's go to, let's go to Romans 11. Just said it again there, service. We agree with that. We're gonna leave you right there, right for right now. So, because the the nation, oh, go to Romans eleven. And let's start at verse twenty two, real quick. Romans chapter eleven, verse twenty two. Behold, therefore, be excuse me. Behold. Therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity. On them which fell, severity. Come on. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Come on. Then they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. Come on. For God is able to graft them in again. So when you start looking at Romans 11, Romans 11 is showing us, y'all, that Israel was broken off, became a wild olive tree. When you go back to Jeremiah 11, it proves that the olive tree is Judah and Israel, and it's broken. First, a good olive tree to be bring forth fruits, to bring forth the righteousness that God set in it. But then it's broken off. So you have to behold the severity of God. If you don't follow Christ, now it don't matter what you're trying to do. If you are Jew or you are Gentile, you are Judah or Israel, you still can be cast away. You still can be done. You have to follow and repent in Christ. Read on. Verse 24. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree. How could you be cut out of the olive tree if you were never even a part of it? Read. Which is wild by nature. Come on. And we're grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. Come on. How much more shall these, which be the natural branches. Those who know that their Israel know to keep the law. How much more of those, read. Be grafted into their own olive tree. So it's showing you that you had a fraction of people who knew that they were Israel, who knew how to walk, who knew that they were supposed to keep commandments and not be hypocrites versus people who don't. You had that fraction right there, and the olive tree was broken. Now watch, read. Verse 25, for I would not, brethren. I would not, brethren. The brethren are the Israelites. Read. That ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Of what mystery? Read. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceit. You're using your own understanding. You're not using the scriptures. Read. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. Come on. Unto the fullness of the Gentiles, Gentiles become in. The fullness of the Gentiles have to come in. What does that mean? Read the next verse. And so all. And so all Israel shall be saved. He's just telling you the Gentiles are the Israelites. So that all Israel, the Gentiles got to come in so that all Israel could be saved. All Israel. All Israel. <laughs> Judah and Ephraim, the two houses in Ezekiel 37. This is really simple when you have the spirit teaching you. It's simple. It's, re it's really that simple. And you, had, and you had Israelites that just was of the, what we would call the southern kingdom still lost. So you can't break this down and be like northern and southern. 
you got to understand Israel who know to do better and Israel who don't know to do better. Stop breaking it down, northern and southern, northern and southern, because you lose yourself. The, you got right at this moment, at this moment of time that Paul is writing this, you have the northern kingdom nowhere in existence. You have a portion, a group of northern kingdom that's being called the Samurais, that's being called Scythians, that's being called barbarians. They nowhere in this movement, but they got to hear the truth. And then he put on. Oh. Then he put on, um, what are we saved from? The most high wrath, not just from. We know we're saved from the most. Oh, y'all got it. We know we're not just saved from the enemies. Yes, we are. But what's going to happen? The most high is going to destroy this place. So we're also going to be saved from his wrath. That's Romans 5 and 9. We know this. You just said they were getting their servants. We agree with that. That's not salvation. Working under somebody is not salvation. You didn't listen. It's for us to be put back on top in rulership. That's the salvation the Bible speaks of. I don't know what you're speaking of. We already know we're being saved from the Most High wrath. The scripture is Romans 5 and 9. Seven. Who do you think you're talking to? Verse 26. Read it again. You want me to finish? Yeah. Romans chapter 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. That's Christ. All Israel is going to be saved. Does that mean everybody? That means people who repent in Christ. They need to be saved. Come on. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So it's showing you those Gentiles, those people who are you looking at as, as, as Gentiles are the Israelites that need to be brought back in when they hear the message of Christ. The message of Christ has always been to go get thee to them of the captivity. The captives are now going to be set free. How do you attach everybody to that? Okay, next scripture he, he, he was he, he was about. So now read when you read Jeremiah 11, what is it, six, 16? There is a good olive tree, Jeremiah 11, 16, which consists of the house of Judah and the house of Israel. No, okay, go to, go to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah 11. We're going to see if the, how good the olive tree is. It should still be standing when we continue to read in Jeremiah 11 in verse. Let's go. Start at verse what? 16. Jeremiah chapter 11 and verse 16. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. That's that good olive tree. Come on. Fair. And of goodly fruit. Come on. With the noise of a great tumult. With the noise of a great tumult, meaning confusion. Come on. He have kindled fire upon Come it. Come on. And the branches of it are broken. And the branches are broken. So if the branches are broken, the branches that are broken have to be grafted back in. Again. 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 Read. Verse 17. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee. I pronounce evil Come on. against thee for the evil of the house of Israel. The evil of the house of who? Of the house of Israel. Come on. And of the house of Judah. That's the two. That's the, that's the two. The evil of it was because of those two. They're broken off now. Is it more? Yes. Come on. Which they have done against themselves. To provoke me to anger. So that's why it was broken off. So yes, it was a good olive tree, but because it was, but because of the evil, they got broken off. Paul is not pulling Romans 11 out of the air. Don, you is not listening. He said, please, panel, define what salvation means if it does not mean, if it does not being saved from harm. We just told you you're being saved from God's wrath. I gave you the precept, Romans 5 and 9. Are you listening? you too busy trying to teach and you're not listening. We just told you we're saved from our enemies. Why? Because the Most High is going to destroy this place. When you destroy this place, we're going to be delivered from that destruction, which means we're going to be saved from the wrath. That's the harm. We just told you that. Matter head. of fact, we're done with him. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. Sorry, you're not listening. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't sit and be in the seat of the scornful when you're getting scriptures of why somebody believes something. That's what I, we opened up and said before. What we opened up and said before is that men believe what they believe. You still got to go stand before your maker. So that makes no difference. That's why he said, well, the, in his statement, go to Romans 3. Go to 
Romans 3. The book of Romans. Chapter 3, verse 3. For what if this and walk in the spirit of Christ? Period. So by somebody saying Israel didn't want to believe and then we turn to the Gentiles, you're contradicting what Paul just said there. It don't matter if some did not believe. Read on. Verse for a God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And as it is written. As it is written. Okay, as it is written. So salvation, the definition of salvation according to the Bible is for Israel to be saved from their enemies. It has nothing to do with to be saved from, oh, uh, you know what? The nation's going to be saved too. They're going to be saved. They're going to be saved. Well, we, let's show them what they're going to be saved for. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Oh, you're going to be saved, all right. I don't see why somebody would have a problem when you say uh, Israel going to be on top and the nation's going to have to serve them because you serving your oppressor right now. Exactly. Show you you got Stockholm Syndrome. And I, and I guarantee you nobody in this kingdom is saying anything about that. The so-called Donald Trump going to tell you he ain't even gonna, he, he going to bypass you. Donald Trump don't care nothing about what you're saying. Sure These enough. presidents don't care anything about you saying. The Congress – the uh the um the way that the Senate and everything is set up, they running it how they want to run it. And you and and the bottom line is they're running this the country, the system, and everything, and it's grinding our people to powder. Yep. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the house shall take them, I mean, and the people shall take them, and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. What, 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 what's up? Re, re. Is that what he want? Oh, they want you to answer that question? They want Revelation 21, 24, right? Oh, okay. All right. Just keep reading. The Revelation. Chapter 21 and verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Okay. Verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. <laughs> of the nations into it? And <laughs> I'll be the last. Let me get myself together. It says in verse 27, And there shall no wise enter into anything that defileth of itself, neither whatsoever work of the abomination, or make of the lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Mm. <coughs> so, Daniel. Okay. Test. What's sad is that, you know, once again, these people, they're getting on these panels and um, trying to teach, and then they're throwing scriptures that with clearly no understanding. Obviously, we're showing Isaiah 14 about who's going to be saved, who's going to be possessed. We went to Revelation, still in Isaiah 60 and 10. It's saying the same thing, that they're going to be bringing, the other nations are going to be bringing the forces of their treasuries back to us. And it's, and it's sad that brothers, you know, who are not learned is keep continuing to do that, but they themselves have not re read the Bible, where once again it shows even during the time of Solomon, this same setup has happened in the glorious kingdom, mm -hmm. where the nations had to come forth and gave us the treasuries of everything, even down to the Queen of Sheba, even was marveled about how the kingdom is going to set up, sh foreshadowing what's going to come during Christ's reign, which is better. So it's like, 
what are, what are, what are these brothers? What are you talking about? What are you thinking when you're coming on the panel and trying to say anything? Just like the scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1, it says, keep thy mouth shut when it comes before the house of the Most High. Shut up and listen and learn. Simple as that. So now I guess he's focusing on and the nations of them which are saved. I mean, go give him homework. Just, just read Genesis 48 and um, what, 19? Figure that out. Then you'll get your answer. We're not going to give it to you. Yeah, because no matter what, you got to realize, men are be people believe what they want to believe. And w one thing we're a firm believer in and always w what we always say, this is exactly what we teach, all right, is every man must be persuaded in their own minds. So what? You believe what you believe? Go stand out in the corner and build your own Israelite Baptist Pentecostal. Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. But 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 also the scripture also says too, just to keep this in mind, the Lord should send you strong delusions where you should believe a lie. Give me Romans three and thirteen. <laughs> this is what these guys are. Just it just hit me. This is what these guys are from that pastor right there to these brothers right here. Um, Romans, yeah, three and thirteen. Chapter three and verse thirteen. Their throat is op is is an open sepulchre. Their throat are an open grave. A sepulchre is a grave, a hole hone out of stone. That's their throat. You got an open gra grave, you're in danger of falling into it. Their throat is an open sepulchre. Go ahead. With their tongues, they have used deceit. With their tongues, they are deceiving our people because they think they understand the scriptures until it get explained to them and broken down the proper way. Read. The poison of ass. Remember you were talking about poison earlier? The poison of ass, a poisonous snake ass. They have poison in their lips, spewing out venom to our people because they think they know the scripture when they don't. Because their belief, they contradict about 67 to 80 other scriptures. Easily. No strangers to pass through Jerusalem. But, oh, no, th but they can come in. Hmm. Well, you just contradicted Joel. Do you know more than Brother Joel? <laughs> Do you? Read. The poison of ass. Is under their lips. Under their lips. They're spewing venom out of their lips. The scriptures speak of brothers like this. So hopefully the brother can see something. Yeah. Um, Genesis 4, they might go right over his head. But if he read carefully, he'll see something in there. Hit us back up after that. Not today, though, because we're done with you. <laughs> so in Romans, in Romans 10, y'all, go there real quick. Romans 10 and verse 1. I told y'all, once again, the uh, letters of Paul, the snare mask, the master snare writer. But Romans 10 and 1. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For who? It says, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For Israel as they might be saved. That's his prayer. For Israel to be saved. Now, Paul have a job. His apostleship is to the Gentiles. Those who don't know anything about Christ. They don't know that they are a part of Israel. They're aliens. They, they're, 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 they're broken branches. But he has to show them. He has to give them that emulation. To show them how to copy me. Follow me. I'm going to show you what Christ said. I'm going to provoke you of my flesh to, to be able to follow Christ. Okay. But with Israel, this was, was the problem with those who was Jews. This is the problem. Read the next verse. Verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Come on. But not according to knowledge. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. We know that knowledge, when you read in what? Malachi 2 and 7 is, is the knowledge is how you keep the laws, the laws of God. But they have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. And that's what's happening even in our day. Come on. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness. You're ignorant of how God said to keep the commandments.
but you're trying to do it the way you want to do it. That's the problem. Read. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. But, but by doing so, you will not submit yourself unto the righteousness of God. So you start to do things like uh, Mark 16. Let's go to Mark 16. Mark 16. This is what, you know, all the scriptures that people want to use to try to blend in salvation and bring everybody in. This is what they use, y'all. Mark 16. Say, well, I just, I, you know, I just think everybody, you know, should be in this. Okay. All right. Verse 15. Say, Mark. Chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah, go, go. That means to everyone. Just go to preach to every creature. Come on. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. So they go, see, we're going to um go to everyone, every creature. And they stop right there. That means everybody. Well, let's go to Romans. Let's go back to Romans. Chapter 8. Because it goes to say he that believe it. Now, who going to believe that they're servants? Then, okay, fine. All praises. Like like uh, Paul told Agrippa. I wish everybody believed this. I wish all would believe this. Because we'll be put right back on top instantaneously. <laughs> verse 19. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. For the earnest speculate expectation. For the earnest expectation, read. Of the creature. Of the creature, read. Waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. God. So how you, if you go, the earnest expectation of the creature is to wait for the manifestation of the evidence of the sons of God, who is also known as the Israelites. All right. So, right. The, but the earnest expectation. So, if we're going to all creatures, we have to un have an understanding that all those creatures are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for those sons of God to come back to Christ so it can be made evident. But somebody go, oh, well, yeah, what are you waiting for then? For that creature to be saved. The book of Acts. Chapter 13. Start at start at verse three. Let's start at verse two. The book of Acts, chapter thirteen, and verse two. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, "Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherein two I have called them." And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them. They sent them away. Come on. So they, being set forth by the Holy Ghost, departed into Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Which is which is Kittim. Come on. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. Come on. And when they had gone throughout through the isles into Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. You know, you got to understand something. The reason why we're pulling this is you have to understand something at a high level. With our people, they will use anything in their power outside of the words of God, man. They'll use anything in their power outside of the words of God. And that's where that serpent, that poison, 
that poison come in and then sit down and go, well, what about this scripture? Um, you know, I see that Christ, you know, he did come for them alone, but sorcery. Because Christ said, let your yay, your yay be yay and your nay be nay. You can't go, but Christ came for only Israel, but. Now you want to use some type of mystic sorcery on you want you want to use something outside of what we just read, so you go but. Then brothers show you consistently, yeah, all Israel need to be saved. Romans eleven is a beautiful chapter to show you who's adopted back in. Okay. But they always use, and I think this is where. And we're going to close it out. But this is where a lot of you folks kind of fall backwards. You don't understand to the Jew first. You don't understand what that means. You, you group all Jews together as Israel. That's where your problem's at. There's no. When it says to the Jew first, it's talking about the tents of Judah. They have to be raised up first. The tents of Judah is that southern kingdom. Primarily Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, period. You, that does not mean that you don't have the tribe of Judah, don't know who they are. The tribe of Benjamin, do you have of them, they don't know who they are. The tribe of Levi, they don't know who they are. That's why we was reading back in Isaiah 66. He going to set the priests even back up. All right. It doesn't mean that you had Issachar and uh, the rest of the tribes stuck in one area and then they go into these places. No, the places that Paul and the rest of the apostles traveled was the places that you read in the Maccabees underneath the Greeks. Underneath the Romans, underneath the Persians, we were scattered to all of those provinces. So they are going to those places. But have have you not really understood that? Primarily, the main people who understood that they were Israel and that they had to keep the law, just like we read up in uh, Matthew 23, do what they say, all they bid you, do and observe, don't do after their works because they were being hypocrites. So now with the movement moving forward, hypocrites are still there. What does Paul have to do? He has to go, you know what? Yeah, I see this. We got to turn to the Gentiles. We got to focus on those who don't know who they are. That's really the statement. All right. Not focus on the nations. Everybody has a proper order. When we're talking about salvation, for folks, for to clear it up for you folks, salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of those of Israel that have to repent in Christ. That's who it's for. OK. When you're talking about saved for a purpose, the nations will be saved for a purpose. All right. If you have a problem with that, take it up with the prophet Isaiah. Take it up with the prophet Jeremiah. Take it up with Christ. Take it up with Paul. You have a problem with all that or the whole with the whole Bible. OK. The book of Acts, chapter five and verse twenty nine. The book of Acts, chapter five, verse twenty nine. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So as you start to study and start understanding the, uh, the history behind Israel going off into madness, why Christ, you know, is so beautiful because he came to save his people from their sins. Christ, out of his own mouth, tell you, he, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Lord said he's only sent to them that are lost. You got to take that up with Christ. You can't, I mean, we don't, that has not, no bearings on what you believe if it's outside of the words of Christ, what Christ told us to do, all right? And Christ told us to make sure that we keep the commandments if we love them. If you love me, keep my commandments. How about that? Stop worrying about the other nations. How about keeping the commandments? All right. We give all praises to the Most High in Christ. All praises to the Most High in Christ. Yes. Yeah, we, we give all praises to the Most High in Christ, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all continue. Y'all make sure that y'all continue to 
to uh, study. Make sure you continue to put forth good works for your people. Stop worrying about the other people. Worry about you first. Clean your own backyard first. The judgment must start at the house of God first, okay? We give all praises to the most high in Christ. We're going to continue to go out to the streets and teach our people, all right? You, if you don't have that movement, that's on you, okay? Go teach whatever you're teaching, and we're going to see how, who the, how the most high elevate. How about that? All right. All praises to the most high in Christ. And with that, y'all, we say shalom. shalom.